Welcome back to Your Town. My name is Steve Elzey. I'm the host and the CEO of Your Sanctuary Productions. Here is another fantastic guest for you, and really for me too. His name is Paul Michel. He is the superintendent of the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, which is the largest national marine sanctuary in the continental United States at this time. I think it's over 6,000 miles, but we're gonna find out exactly because Paul's right here. Hi, Steve. Hey, Paul. We, now, we've done this before. We have. We, we, I'm we, usually in your, in your spot. You, you know, <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing, yeah. Paul Michel, the host of, of, of uh, Your Sanctuary Television. And uh, Paul and I are getting together, and, and we're going to uh, make this whole thing happen again. Yeah. So tell our audience the, uh, about what's going on with the, the sanctuary. It seems to be getting bigger and bigger, and I love that. <laughs> Well, it actually got bigger in 2008 with mm -hmm. the addition of the Davidson Seamount. Okay. So that, that's an offshore area, it's an underwater mountain basically that rises off the seafloor from about 8,000 feet deep to within 4,000 feet of the surface. It's this giant mountain, it's like the size of Mount Shasta. Uh, and at the top of this seamount are giant corals and sponges as big as you and I. They're like the old growth forest of the ocean, spectacular. Uh, and in that cold, dark water, you wouldn't expect to see such vibrant, you know, corals of mm -hmm. all kinds of colors and shapes. But mm -hmm. it's like in a in a tropical reef, but it's in the dark, cold ocean. Uh, so this area is 775 square miles that was added to the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary back in 2008. So that's been the biggest okay. you know, expansion. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then now, what what was this about? And, and you know, I, I could be wrong here, but I thought there was something about. Yeah, extending it all the way to, to San Francisco or, or Point Arena. Or well, the, like the Farallons that. National Marine Sanctuary, the Greater Farallons, sure. they expanded uh, two years ago okay. up to Point Arena in Mendocino okay. County. So okay. that was the expansion for mm -hmm. them as well as Cordell Bank. Oh. Yeah. So, but that's not part of our sanctuary, right, but our right. sister sanctuaries to the north. And, and d d d does the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary abut? Yes. Uh, against the, yeah. the Farallons? We have these three contiguous mm -hmm. marine sanctuaries with Monterey. Uh, Farallons and Cordell Bank. And, and do you mind if, if uh, I ask you this too? Yeah. And, and then in Southern California, we have some sanctuaries also? Yes, we have Channel Islands National mm -hmm. Marine Sanctuary, okay. which is just the area, the waters around the Channel Islands themselves, offshore of Santa Barbara. And then of course, we've got Olympic Coast National Marine Sanctuary up in Washington Peninsula. So spectacular areas. And, and, right, yeah. and, and what I'd love too is from, from uh, almost from the channels, but, but let's say from, from down in Cambria, yeah. all the way up to at the end of Cordell Bank, then yeah. it's sanctuary, all the way up All the way the to Point Arena, basically from, from Cambria to Point Arena, it's National Marine Sanctuaries. But for what we call the Donut Hole, which is an area offshore of San Francisco County that's not part Oh. of any national marine sanctuary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Paul, I was looking at the maps. And mm -hmm. by, by the way, could you d d tell everyone one, the, the, your, your, your website, your URL, because... Yes, it's MontereyBay.NOAA.gov. MontereyBay.NOAA.gov. Yeah, that's N-O-A-A. And, yeah. and, and we, will, we will make sure that we, we tell folks about that yeah, time yeah. and again, because there is so many resources on there. Uh, it, it completely blows my mind. Yeah. The, the pictures and everything else is so beautiful. Beautiful, and you can find out information about all of the sanctuaries. But w what I really enjoy too is, is, is being able to see the studies and all the ongoing studies that you, that you folks are doing. Right, right. And there's so much going on. Um, I wanted to ask you about a, a, a something too because mm -hmm. uh, I love birds. Yeah. And I had no I uh, no idea there are so many birds that travel here right. uh, from uh, Hawaii or Australia. Yes. Is yeah. it, uh, we have some of the, the greatest ocean travelers on the planet that, that come here. Uh, my favorite is the Sooty Shearwater, which flies all the way from you know, the coast of, of South America, all the way across to New Zealand and to Monterey Bay on this annual <laughs> migration. They are the, the frequent flyer bird <laughs> <laughs> of, of the planet. Uh, and then you have the, the albatross, too, which flies across That's the right. Pacific from Jap Japan to Monterey. And they'll do that journey several times a year. Uh, and they'll dip down to the Hawaiian Islands. So you've got these long distance voyagers. Uh, and they come here because this is the blue buffet. This is the, the place where they can rely on things to eat. Mm -hmm. So it's so rich here. Mm -hmm. uh, and they count on Monterey Bay and the coast of California for uh, regenerating their energy supplies. You know, and you've got these species like the leatherback sea turtle that comes all the way from Indonesia. 
to, to come here to feast on jellyfish. You know, mm -hmm. so this is this is what I call the blue buffet. It, it provides. I love that the big blue buffet. Yes, huh? yes. And and that was really terrific to see all the coverage uh, the sanctuary received uh, uh, from from PBS and BBC oh, during great. Big Blue. Oh yeah. my. Gosh, yes. I get tingles just well, thinking about it. Well, we've never that. had an international spotlight mm -hmm. on us like that, like mm -hmm. the BBC provided in that, that mm -hmm. documentary. And we worked with them for a long time to, to, to come up with the show and to do a lot of filming uh, prior uh, and then to be able to go live and find the animals that they were looking for was, was amazing. And you know, it, it, it was called Big Blue. I, I always thought that referred to the ocean. Was that they talked about the the whale, the big blue whale? Well, that was what? that was the signature thing they wanted to try to do oh, okay. was to find the blue whale. Okay, and that was All what right. led up. And and okay. luckily it it happened. You know, and I tried to tell them. I said, you, "There's no guarantees that we go out on the ocean. You go out to look for whales, and you find birds. You go out mm -hmm. to look for birds, you find whales. You mm -hmm. just you never know. Right. And I'm not the whale whisperer. I couldn't make it happen. <laughs> so." <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's great. And and so you saw they they actually were able to capture footage of a, yes, of, a, of, a yes. of a blue whale, right. the largest mammal Ever. in existence on, Ever. on the earth. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that is so wonderful. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I, I was standing off to the sidelines in awe, yes. but I, you know, I did my best to give you some Facebook pushes. Yes. <laughs> now, there's so many fascinating things with going on in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. I, I, the I was look. I know that website. Uh, what is that website again? MontereyBay.noaa.gov. All right. Yeah. So you you heard that? Please go there. Um, uh, uh, so many things going on. You can mm -hmm. find out about them on the website, but share share some things, please. Yeah, well, there's so much going on. It's like, where to start? But, the stars? Um, well, one of the things that we're really busy with right now, mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound that exciting, it's management plan review. So this is our no. management plan, which sort of guides what we're going to do for the next five to ten years. So it's a very public process to get input mm -hmm. on what we should be doing and okay. get feedback from the public. But a couple of really interesting issues have spun out of that. One is sound, sound in the ocean. You know, and what does the ocean sound like? Mm -hmm. Right, and, and are there man-made sounds in the ocean that we mm -hmm. should be concerned about? Mm -hmm. So, uh, spinning out of this is a, a renewed effort to listen to the ocean. And so, with hydrophones and other listening devices oh. put in the ocean, we're going to basically create a soundscape, so a characterization of what it sounds like in the deep ocean. And already, you can you can go to Ambari's website mm -hmm. and listen to the ocean 24/7. They have a hydrophone down on their Mars cable that's listening all the time. So it's kind of interesting. You can go online and just listen to all the clicks and, and calls, and you can hear engines from shipping, you know, container ships, and mm -hmm. uh, wow. you can hear occasionally the, a seal bomb go off. You know, these are the fishermen that are throwing M80s at. Oh. At the sea lions to keep them out of their squid catch. And, okay. But so you're getting this, you know, amazing, you know, symphony, symphony of mm -hmm. sounds in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we want to start with is mm -hmm. what's the ocean sound like. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also going to be doing an exhibit at our exploration center in Santa Cruz, so people can come in and listen to different different sounds. They can push different buttons and hear yes. different whale calls, Ooh. or they can listen to what a container ship sounds like in the ocean, oh. things like that. So. Yeah, and, 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 and please share w w about the ex uh, Exploration Center. Well, where you've it been is. there. It's yes. pretty phenomenal. It's it, a, it is. It, it was built in 2012, where mm -hmm. we opened in 2012. It's a 12,000 square foot, beautiful state-of-the-art you know, visitor center with amazing uh, exhibits and interactive displays and kiosks and a phenomenal film made by Bob Talbot. Uh, a gift store, uh, and mm -hmm. we do amazing programs there with school kids yes. and special tours, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it's really neat. Yeah. Now, I, I saw something about um, uh, sea stars. Uh, what's new at the, at the sanctuary? Sea star? <laughs> are, are you are you in on that, or <laughs> do you know what, what that's all about? I was the, just wondering. Well, <laughs> you're, I think you're referring to some changes that we've been seeing in the yes. ocean in the near shore mm -hmm. with the kelp forest, right? right. And it kind of started back in 2013 with what we were observing as a sea star wasting disease. Mm. So all of a sudden. It was noticed entire, on the entire west coast with sea stars were basically melting away. So they were dying off in rapid numbers. And sea stars are a, a predator for things like purple urchins. Right? They go after purple urchins. Okay. Uh, and so without a predator, purple urchins just went on a feeding rampage. 
And so due to other sort of perfect storm kind of situation with really warm Pacific Ocean waters, uh, the purple urchins just exploded. And they love to eat kelp. Oh, no. They live to eat kelp. Oh, and, no. and they're like goats of the sea. Oh, boy. They just travel in herds, and, mm -hmm. they, and they grow really fast and quickly. And so they've just taken over. So especially you know, from the Central Coast all the way to the Oregon border, we've seen close to 90% loss of kelp forest in the last two years. Oh. It's really bad on the North Coast of, like, from San Francisco north because they just have one main species of kelp. Uh, and so you could go there and snorkel and dive and see nothing on the seafloor but purple urchins everywhere. Oh, wow. And the kelp is gone. Uh, and so it kind of started in 2013 with mm -hmm. the sea star wasting disease. Sure which led to the purple urchin explosion. Mm -hmm. They've been munching on kelp, and now we're seeing you know, massive loss of kelp forest. And, now and here in Monterey Bay, we're a little bit better off in, mm -hmm. in a big Sur coast just because we have more than one species dominant of kelp. So we have lots of, oh. of kelp species, okay. and we have more of a cold water influence from the deep canyons that are so close to shore. Okay. So, but, but we're still seeing a lot of uh, what we call urchin barrens, which is just nothing but purple sea urchins that you see. Here. Okay. And, yeah. and there's really nothing that can be done, right? Well, there's a, there's a lot of effort to see what can be done. So mm -hmm. there's some pilot science studies to okay. go out and, and see if you can uh, remove purple urchins in an area and see how fast the kelp might come back. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're talking huge amounts of areas. You'd have to go out and smash a lot of purple urchins. Okay. So this is so it's the science community is determining. You know, is this a natural you know uh, occurrence that will will bounce back towards mm -hmm. kelp dominated? You know, or is this something that we really need to do a more proactive sort of management intervention. And, yeah. and, and, and I, pivotal in that yeah. is what is wrong with the sea stars? Yeah, right? well, we're starting to see them come back. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of juvenile sea stars. Okay. And the, the, the worry is, you know, we haven't seen any big adult sea stars, especially like the sun stars, which were so dominant oh, here. They're so, uh, they're so beautiful, right? Yes. So we're hoping that over time <coughs> they'll, they'll come back. And speaking uh, of pilot programs, mm -hmm. we had a conversation about black abalone. There was a mudslide. Yeah. Could, could you tell yeah. the, the viewers about that? Because it's, it's a yeah. wonderful. Well, black abalone, are the, they're smaller than the, the red abalone, which people okay. snorkel and dive for up on the north coast. And black abalone were overfished back you know, 50 years ago or more. And so they're an endangered species. And really, the only place that they are left that they thrive mm -hmm. is on the Big Sur coast. Oh. And so back in 2016, we had a major rainfall event mm -hmm. and a major landslide at a place called Mud Creek, of all things. <laughs> <laughs> and there was one massive landslide that created 15 new acres of land in the <laughs> sanctuary in one big you know, landslide. And unfortunately, that landslide covered a lot of black abalone. Oh, no. Yeah, so immediately buried and, and killed those. But as the ocean kept eating away at this new formed peninsula and mm -hmm. creating all this turbidity of just you know muddy water mm -hmm. that spread north and south up along the coast, oh, it okay. was it was covering black abalone uh, and and oh. endangering them and killing them. Okay. So we, along with the state of California and other scientists, along with the National Marine Fisheries Service, mounted a rescue effort. Great. <laughs> yeah, to go down there and see if we could first assess just the damage that was done to the black abalone and intertidal, mm -hmm. but can we? Can we grab these guys and save them, mm -hmm. and maybe outplant them somewhere else and see if they'll thrive somewhere else? And so that's what we did. And it's going to be an ongoing program to go down there and, um, you know, grab as many of the black abalone that are in danger and transplant them somewhere else where they can survive. And Fantastic. Thrive. Yeah, that was now, really exciting. And, and now you say transplant them, so you're moving them to other ocean locations. Yes. Yes. That is sounds very novel. Is that the first time? It's the first like time it's ever been done, to my knowledge, okay. and and it's tricky business because mm -hmm. the, when you remove a black abalone from its hold, mm -hmm. you can damage them, and right. so and you can actually kill them in the process. Sure. And so you've got to be very careful about how you get them off the rock, mm -hmm. and then transport them very carefully and outplant them. So, but we've had a lot of success. So oh, far. good. Yeah. Well, yeah. when you come back, because you are going to come back, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. we, want, we want to hear how, how the abalone are doing. Yeah. Uh, I, we, we have got to mention something mm -hmm. that is so important to the sanctuary uh, as far as finding out what's going on underwater, yeah. um, and that's Simon. Can Simon, you tell the audience yes. about 
what Simon is, and, and if we have time, maybe sure. one of the studies or something? Sure. Well, Simon is uh, a separate website from our main website, but you can get to it from right. our website. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So if you click on research and monitoring, you'll get to Simon. And oh. Simon is a sanctuary integrated monitoring network. And we set this up 15 years ago or so because we mm -hmm. just needed a place to dedicate to all the amazing science and research that's going on here on the Central Coast of California. And we have 25 different marine science institutions that are doing work here. And so it's just an amazing amount of information. So really what we're trying to do on this website is provide one place where you can go and see what a lot of our partner science is doing in the sanctuary. Okay. So you can find out about studies, you can mm -hmm. find about the results of these studies, mm -hmm. you can learn about a lot of the natural history mm -hmm. of the habitats and all the organisms that call this place home and mm -hmm. those that visit here. But one of the most uh, popular parts of the website is the is the photo database. Sure. And it, these are amazing photos that have been collected over the years. Oh. And they're free for the download, right? And so sure. the thousands and thousands of pictures of bird, seabirds and marine mammals mm -hmm. and fishes and algae and you know whatever you like, you can find in our Simon photo database. And it's gorgeous. And, and, I, I, yeah. I, and forgive me for, for plugging this, yeah. but yeah. You have two terrific people who, you know, give their time and their art. Uh, Steve Lonhart yeah. and and Chad King. Yes. And way to go, guys! Just want to give you a shout out yeah. there because your your photos are beautiful and thank you for doing that. Yeah. And 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 what is that website again? It's Simon. No, org. But the, your website. Oh, Monterey Bay. Bay. No, .noaa.gov. MonteryBay.noaa.gov, yeah. and I keep repeating it because you will be amazed if you check this out, folks. Yeah. Um, uh, tell us about the beach beachcomber program. We've got just a little time left. Yeah. But did, 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 are you up on that? Sure. I, you yeah. use so many volunteers. There's so many great people yeah. here, yeah, and, I and, know. and you take it's wonderful how you're able to utilize that resource. Yeah. Well, Beachcombers is one of many citizen science programs that we have where we mm -hmm. you know, get the public involved as volunteers to do things like collect water quality samples for us to see how the water quality is doing, uh, to assess you know, uh, the beaches, um, to interact with the public and tell them about the marine sanctuary and why it's important to protect it. Beachcombers is a fun one because it actually involves volunteers that have a stretch of beach that is theirs to walk Ooh. once a month mm -hmm. and to collect data on the, the actually the dead animals that they find on mm -hmm. the beach and catalog those and document them over time mm -hmm. such that it gives us a baseline of what we call beach cast, those organisms that wind up washing up on shore. They oh. could be seabirds, they mm -hmm. could be sea lions, they mm -hmm. could be sea otters. And actually there was a time maybe 10 years ago or so where we saw an inordinate number of uh, cormorants that mm. had been washed up and we're, mm -hmm. dead and we're like, what is going on? And it was actually a result of uh, the drill, uh, the gill net fishery was capturing, uh, you know, as, as incidental catch, right. all these seabirds. Oh. And so, mm -hmm. as a result, the, the drift gill net uh, mm -hmm. was closed down in Monterey Bay because mm -hmm. of the impact of seabirds. But we wouldn't have known that had we not had the beachcomber program. Beach program. Yeah. Great program. Yeah. And Paul, th th this is so exciting. Yeah. Because I know you and I have, been, uh, have discussed doing something like this, and you went out and you did it. Yeah. You started a foundation. That's right. Oh, please tell us about yeah. that. Yeah, well, for years I've been wanting to do you know, more fundraising and advocacy for our many programs that mm -hmm. you know, we started years ago, but have, due to budget constraints, we just haven't been able to keep going. Uh, and so looking at uh, last year was our 25th anniversary of the Marine Sanctuary. I wanted to do something big mm -hmm. uh, and to celebrate the 25 year anniversary, but also find it as a time that we could launch uh, a foundation mm -hmm. to do fundraising and advocacy work on behalf of the sanctuary. And so uh, we've got just stellar people in our community, leaders like Leon Panetta and Sam Farr and Fred Keeley and Ted wow. Balistrieri oh. and Hillary Bryant. Oh. Uh, Dan Hafley, uh, these are these are your A team yes. that you would want on any board. Mm -hmm. uh, but their love of the sanctuary and their connection to the sanctuary inspired them to step forward to be our board. Um, and we're doing a lot of fundraising. Uh, we got a phenomenal challenge grant from the Monterey Peninsula Foundation, a hundred thousand dollar challenge grant. Wonderful. That we've got about thirty days left to try to reach the goal of raising okay. hundred thousand to reach that. Um, and but it's it's exciting, you know, sure. for the first time in the 25 year history of the sanctuary, uh, we've got a, a chapter of the National Foundation 
that's here locally, that's raising money locally, that will stay locally to do great things for the sanctuary. So I'm really excited about that. Congratulations on that. Yeah. We're out of time, but I want to thank you oh, so much for coming by. Absolutely. All right. My and you, you promised I'll be back. on air, you promised to come back I'll next be time. Back. Have you seen what's happening in your sanctuary lately? Join us right now for another episode of Your Sanctuary, a program that highlights what makes our National Marine Sanctuary so special and the people that keep them that way.